A bit over a year ago, Garrett provided me one of their AT Max metal detectors for review and testing purposes. And in this video, I want to give you a bit of an overview how I use the AT Max and what quite unexpected use cases I actually found for it. Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. I hope you all are well. In today's video, I want to talk a little bit about metal detecting. For the past few years, I always thought it would be quite interesting to have a metal detector with me on my travels, because I often come to quite unique remote locations. Sometimes they really should be remnants of uh, the old early settlers history. And I was always wondering what I could find with a metal detector. However, I never actually made the step to purchase one. A bit over a year ago, I was on the Sydney for Wheel Drive Adventure Show, which is a show more for the industry and not for the end user. While walking around there and speaking to quite a few exhibitors, I also walked past the Garrett stand and um, started chatting with the guys from Garrett. And after a little while and they uh, understanding what I'm doing, they asked me whether I would be interested to take one of their Garrett metal detectors with me on a trip and see how I go with that. So Garrett kindly provided me an AT Max um, metal detector and all the necessary gear. And I have carried that now with me for the past year on a few trips. Metal detecting in Australia can be quite rewarding. Next to uh, the mineral wells we have in Australia, let's start with gold. There also is a lot of early settlers history and you can find quite a few metal pieces in that regards. And if you go up north, you even can find some World War II relics. So metal detecting in Australia is definitely an interesting pastime. And next to riches through gold finds, you can also find some historic pieces. And that is actually where I was far more interested in. My good friend Dennis Battelle, rest in peace, might, was one of the very early adopters of metal detection. And he found in his early days with metal detectors quite some substantial amounts of gold. However, so far, I haven't been that lucky. If you want more details about metal detectors from someone who really knows what he is doing, check out Warren from North Queensland Explorers. He is really an expert in metal detecting in Australia and has done many very informative videos. But let's now have a look at the features and specs of the Garrett AT Max. The Garrett AT Max metal detector is designed for versatility across various terrains. It offers features which are useful for professionals, but also for the amateur treasure hunter. Here's a straightforward rundown of its specification and functionalities. It is equipped for use in different environments, including dry, humid and even underwater locations up to 10 feet deep. It features Z-Link wireless technology for cable-free detecting experience. It means it links with a wireless headset and you won't annoy your surrounding with a beeping. The AT Max has the deepest penetration of the AT series of detectors. It has various detection modes including a true metal mode and an adjustable ground balance. It comes with a backlit display for low light conditions and offers notch discrimination and proportional audio for improved target identification and separation. The operating frequency is 13.6 kHz, which is suitable for a wide range of metallic targets, including coins and relics. It has a waterproof design and it's fully submersible. It has an iron audio feature. This feature enables the detection of discriminated iron targets, reducing the likelihood of digging undesired items. It's designed to detect multiple adjacent targets efficiently. It includes four search modes tailored to different detecting scenarios. The AT Max is suitable for a range of detecting activities, including beach and underwater hunting, relic searching and general treasure hunting. So let me show you how I, or better we, have used the Garrett AT Max over the past 14 months. 
Unfortunately, like with most things in Australia, the use of metal detectors has some restrictions. So in the desert, you cannot detect on native tidal lands, historic sites or in national parks. However, I obtained permission for some of the private stations we visited to do a bit of detecting there. On a recent camping adventure with the kids, I decided to bring along the Garrett metal detector. Surprisingly, it became one of the highlights of our trip. The kids spent hours with it each day completely engrossed in the metal detecting, exploring and hunting for treasures. Mind you, besides bottle caps, they didn't find any real treasures. It's become such a hit that now, on every trip, I meet with the eager request to pack the Garrett. This was an unexpected yet delightful twist, showcasing the detector's appeal across different ages. What? Oh, it's burnt up metal. It's burnt up metal. Was that it? What I found out during my trips is that metal detecting takes far, far, far more time and effort than I really anticipated. I guess I really didn't think it through because obviously you're not going to have that thing on the ground and right away find something. I uh, realized that to go metal detecting, you really have to have a dedicated trip where you only do metal detecting. Ideally, you go by yourself or maybe with one mate who also does metal detecting. On my general touring trips, I have uh, carried the metal detector for three trips. And here and there, I had a little bit of time of doing some metal detecting, but realistically, it is a very time-consuming hobby and you really need time. I just don't have the way how I travel at the moment um, and with the parties I travel with. However, I ended up taking the metal detector on a camping trip with the kids and to my surprise, the kids really got into it and have actually used the metal detector far more than I have. So I'm going to hand over now to my son, Kalen, and let him give his impression of the Garrett AT Max. So I've been using the Garrett AT Max for a few months now and I've had quite a few opportunities to get to use it. Mostly over all of our camping trip, I've been able to go to the beach, do some scouring around, although it has been pretty hard to find anything good. It seems like it's a very, very uh, competitive hobby, although I have found a few little cool sort of things. Some of them would include some coins, a lot of rubbish that I picked up, and some other little things, a bit of broken jewelry. Although it has been really, really fun just looking around, trying it. On one of the most recent camping trips, I did have quite a few friends who were really, really interested in using the metal detector. So of course, we all went together, did a bit of scouring around on the beach and happened to find quite a bit of rubbish. Although it was quite fun using it together with everybody else. Someone was doing metal detecting, another person was doing the digging, and someone else was using the mini one that you use after you've pulled out a pile and dug it out. So this here is the Garrett pointer. Basically what you use this for is after you've detected some metal, you dig up a pile and then use this to search through the dirt or the sand. Now this is really, really good at pinpointing whatever you're looking for. I feel like I would have spent a lot of time using this, just searching through the dirt with my hands if I didn't have the pinpointer. All you do is turn it on, push it through the sand and it should start buzzing whenever it goes near something metal. I'll show you that now. It also has a light. So this is the separate bag my dad also received with the metal detector. I really like it because you can wear it like a backpack. This is especially good if I'm going to the beach and I'm already holding a few things in my hand. You can also store a few things over here, storage pockets, and yeah, it easily unzips. Now I'll show you guys how to pack up the Garrett AT Max. All you wanna do is push this down and make it as small as possible. Then unscrew this and take off the top head like that. Just going to open up the bag here, put it down, fold it to the side, add any of the other tools you have, put it together and then just zip it all up. So at the end of the day, I really do like this metal detector. It's pretty easy to put it together and not too hard to get into it at first. 
I also love that hope of maybe just finding some sort of treasure when I'm on my trips, and I'll definitely be bringing this in the future. Look, I'm definitely no expert of the Garrett metal detectors or of any metal detector, and there are much better videos out there who really go into every detail from people who have far more experience and knowledge with it. So I only give you here a quick overview over the Garrett AT Max. Um, if you intend purchasing one, there are some excellent tutorials out there which I encourage you to watch, and I also watched myself. Overall, I found it is quite easy to get uh, detecting, it is quite easy to set up, it is quite easy to understand the basic functionality, but then you really need seed time and use the metal detector and uh, get attuned to the different sounds it makes for different materials and so on. And I personally never got that far, unfortunately. Yeah, guys, that was the experience of my family and myself with the Garrett AT Max over the past um, 18 months. So overall, I really like metal detecting, even though so far I really haven't had the time to do it properly. I am still planning to do a trip or two, maybe just with the main focus of metal detecting, but at the moment I just do not have the time for it. The kids really love the metal detector and I certainly will take the metal detector further on the camping trips with the kids because it keeps them busy for quite a few hours, keeps them entertained, so that is always a good thing. And hopefully I also find the time to do a bit more detecting with it and maybe find my riches. So overall, I think the Garrett AT Max is a very good all-round metal detector, uh, which you can use for fossicking, which you can use to find relics, coins, and the likes. So if you're in the market for it, have a look uh, at the Garrett. So as always, guys, I would really appreciate if you uh, could share, like, and subscribe, because it really makes a difference to the YouTube algorithm, and it is hard enough as a solo creator um, to get found and get the videos out. If you can afford it and you like my content, please consider to head over to Patreon or buy me a coffee and with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month, you can really help me staying independent and create these videos for you. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you along the tracks.